morning. My name is Josh Carter, and my dad is Jeff Carter, Rosen's third son, who was born on her 25th birthday. My dad asked me to speak today about my grandmother on his behalf. My cousin Jason was the first grandchild, and he was born when Rosen was 47. She didn't think she was old enough to be a grandmother, so Jason called her mom. This led to almost four decades of my brother and I saying, do you mean mom, mom, or Rosen, mom? <laughs> and today I'm talking about Rosen, mom. Mom's a perfect name for her and who she represented in our family. She was kind, loving, and caring. She drew a lot of energy from her grandkids and later her great-grandkids. She loved her family, and she was happiest whenever there was a new baby. Every time we had a new baby in the family, she could not wait to play with them. And she did play. In the same Carter Center boardroom where my grandparents would host presidents and other world leaders, mom, in her 80s, would get on the floor and chase babies and play peekaboo. One of my favorite memories was during the Carter Center weekend. My dad and I were visiting mom in her hotel room, and mom, at 91, picked up my son, put him on her walker, and chased him around the room. Airplane noise and everything. I have a picture of that, and, the, and both the smiles are so big that it takes up the entire photograph. In fact, mom sat down and colored with her great-grandchildren just two months ago at Papa's 99th birthday. She loved our family. My grandparents got us together every New Year's, and one of her favorite things to do is watch her grandkids play at Disney World. And we went a handful of times, and uh, we did Disney World a little bit differently than most people. We never stood in line. <laughs> Our Disney hosts would slip us in the side door at every attraction and get right on the ride. And believe it or not, Mom's favorite ride was the Tower of Terror. <laughs> and it became pretty clear that a lot of the Secret Service did not share this opinion. <laughs> so as we got older, one of my favorite things about Disney was hanging back within earshot of the agents negotiating about who was going to go on the ride. <laughs> And we have fantastic Disney World pictures of mom beaming with excitement at the top of the tower and the agents behind her looking like they're about to throw up. <laughs> of course, we got this treatment because my grandparents were the first family. I wasn't old enough to see her in the White House, but I grew up watching my grandparents build the Carter Center. I was very young, but I was there at the beginning. So I grew up watching the Carter Center mature as my grandparents tackled problems that were so grand they seemed almost insurmountable. Latin America and Africa were dominated by strong men, and my grandparents wanted to install democracy. Humanity had only ever eradicated one disease, and my grandparents wanted to eliminate five. And at a time when mental illness was looked on as a failure of character, Rosen wanted to eliminate the stigma and treat mental illness as any other disease that could be diagnosed and treated. My grandparents wanted to do all three of those things at the same time, and they've been unbelievably successful. But no matter what she was doing, Rosen was always mom. My dad worked at the Carter Center, and we lived close. So we were there all the time. And we would often meet up with her after she held a symposium on election monitoring or a guinea worm. And mom would just want to make sure that we were fed and to let us know that she had bagged up fresh blueberries from the farm. And in fact, I bet there are blueberries in her freezer at the Carter Center right now. It was fun watching my grandparents talk about their work at the Carter Center. When I was young, I just enjoyed listening to the stories, but as I got older, I started to recognize some patterns. My grandfather liked statistics, facts, and figures. If I want to know how many doses of mechtazan they're giving out to treat river blindness, I'd ask Papa. But Mom was motivated by the people. Mom's stories were about a performance that a village had put on in her honor. Or they would tell us about children playing in a village that was formerly afflicted by trachoma. Or she would tell us about the astounded joy on people's faces when they learned that something as simple as education and a filter cloth would rid the entire village of guinea worm, a plague so ancient that Moses wrote about it in the book of Numbers. She saw people in forgotten corners of forgotten places as people who have hopes and dreams and are worthy of love. My grandmother used the Carter Center to continue her 50-year mission to end the stigma around mental illness. And she built programs such as fighting for mental health parity and teaching journalists how to write about mental illness. And that was the strategist of Rosalind. That was her political savvy. But the reason 
that she built those programs in the first place. It's the same reason she did everything at the Carter Center. Once again, she saw people that were suffering from mental illness as people who also have hopes and dreams and are worthy of love. Rosen went to almost every corner of the world and met with people from all walks of life. She worked with everybody, from world leaders to people living on less than $1 a day. And when she told us stories about the work that she was doing, she would only ever focus on the people, on humanity. Everywhere she went, she would tell us that the people were just as smart and just as capable as she was. She helped wherever she could. She was mom. My grandma lived one of the most incredible lives this world has to offer, so I'll close by telling her story about the best part of her life. She married a naval officer who took her around the world on a life of adventure. She is a woman from Plains, Georgia, who became a champion hula dancer in Honolulu, Hawaii. And she thought it was the best time of her life. And when she left Navy life, she thought the best part of her life was over. But then her husband got into politics. And she got him elected as a state senator, as the governor of Georgia, and finally as president of the United States. Being first lady was exciting and rewarding, and she thought it was the best time of her life. And when they lost re-election, she thought the best part of her life was over. But then my grandparents built the Carter Center, and she spent the rest of her life improving the lives of people across the globe to free them from oppression, eliminate crippling diseases, and to help people with mental illness live healthy, fulfilling lives. And she knew that was the best time of her life. And she always closed her story there. So today, as we celebrate her life, we know that the best part of her life lives on. But I'm still going to miss you, Mom.